Today on the Sean and Bo Show, NBA analyst Greg Anthony arrested for soliciting a hooker. From Spygate to Deflategate, we're talking balls. Plus, it's that time of the year, America. Get your popcorn ready. It's Pro Bowl time. Woo! Can't wait. It's all coming up on the Sean and Bo Show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome once again, episode 38 of the Sean and Bo Show. I'm Sean O'Donnell, as always, joined by my co-host, Bo Greer. And Bo, I've got an athletic feat that I don't think either one of us could ever come close to. I I was so inspired by this. I've started training. Um, I've got a little workout regimen that I'm doing in my backyard now. Uh Uh-oh. And it's, it's all leading up to maybe just coming halfway to what this great baseball player accomplished, Bo. All right. Uh, now, you're familiar with Wade Boggs. Of course, oh, yeah. he had a great career with the Red Sox, went over to the Yankees and got his ring. Um, and, and I had always heard the story that Wade Boggs, before every single game, consumed an entire chicken. Yeah. Okay, a little strange. But he apparently had a penchant for drinking beer that I have never heard anybody be able to match, not even like Andre the Giant. Um it's always sunny in Philadelphia premiered last week and Charlie day went on Fallon and was talking about the episode in which the gang decides that they're going to try to equal the legendary drinking that Wade Boggs once did on an airplane. That's awesome. So Charlie's character gets extremely intoxicated after, you know, 30 beers or something like that. And an apparition of Wade Boggs appears next to him. He's hallucinating. And it's the real Wade Boggs. I got the real Wade Boggs on the show. So anyway, he's telling Fallon that when he was talking to him, um, you know, in between shots or whatever, Wade Boggs told him that he once consumed, get ready for this, 107 beers in a 24 hour period. That's awesome. How? That, That is just amazing. Like, I guess Wade Box Wade Boggs is like the lumberjack of Major League Baseball. He's just that guy. He always looked like he was at that five o'clock shadow. You know, he was a tough guy chewing tobacco out there. But now we know it's true. Sean Wayne Boggs was a bad dude. Well, I guess I guess what he would do is on these um, cross country flights, he would just be knocking them back nonstop. So he'd show up to the airport already drunk, and then just continue to drink. And then when they'd land wherever they were going, they. would the guys would go out and continue to drink. Yeah. Well, I've often wondered after a night out in the city, you're hungover, you're hurting. But it's amazing how when you get into that pressurized cabin and they start walking around with that drink tray, all of a sudden, whatever she has in that little bottle for 30 bucks, it sounds really good. And you can get the party going mm-hmm. again. We might need to do some drinking science. You, you know what I like to do is, you know, those Southwest drink coupons. Okay. I'll flash those around and all of a sudden I am the celebrity of road D and coach, man. <laughs> yes. I'll look everybody up around me with a, a drink or two and we're, we got a party going. Drinks on this guy. <laughs> but, uh, but unlike Wade Boggs, I mean, I can barely podcast when I'm hungover. This guy had a great career despite or in spite of his love of beer. Yeah, he's a functioning alcoholic. <laughs> that's so, all he was. <laughs> hey, if you want to show your kids a role model, Bo, yeah. that's an American hero. I'm putting Wade Boggs up in every classroom I work on from here on out. I'm getting a big Wade Boggs poster. It was hard to get away from this story this week. I think it's absolutely stupid, but it's been dubbed the Flate Gate. Uh-uh. The allegation, of course, is that the Patriots um, in their conference game against the Colts were purposely deflating balls. So a, a few things about this. First of all, Bo, um, as somebody who played offensive line, and I'm sure you had plenty of interaction with the quarterback, running back, wide receivers, et cetera, how, if they did do this, how would it have helped them? Oh, yeah, you can get a grip on the ball. That's what we all know. That NFL football, especially the NFL football, I believe, uh, you have one, yeah. That NFL football you have sitting right that's, over there. That's plastic, my well, friend. It's plastic, but it's the same shape and regulation. It is impossible to catch those things. I mean, you look at these catches these guys make, Odell Beckham, Des Bryant, Megatron, whatever. These catches are miraculous. When you look at the shape of the NFL ball, it is not an easy thing to grasp. So if somebody takes a little bit of air out of it, and you are a six foot four like LeGarrette Blunt. 240 pound running back. Yeah. You can squeeze that thing like a loaf of bread. 
Good luck popping it out of my hand, especially when what you mentioned off the air. It was raining. It was raining. Yeah, see, and I didn't think about that until you just said that. See, I don't uh, think, yeah, I don't think it was a matter of giving Tom Brady an advantage throwing the ball. I think it was a matter of giving his receivers and running back a better yeah. grip on that ball. But, but really, and this is my takeaway from this scandal, even if they did it, does that account for a 38 point differential? Yeah. I don't think so. I and, mean, it's not like the Colts were fumbling the ball seven, eight, nine times. They had one fumble. So if they weren't doing it and the Patriots were doing it, okay, at best that accounts for one fumble. And what I want to know is, for, like we said in the intro, from Spygate to Deflategate, we're now talking about the guy whose picture I'm looking at here on the table, Belichick, hoodie. He, he has zero personality You know when he's talking to the media. People don't necessarily enjoy him, yet he's been willing to bend rules and in the past couple weeks, allegedly deflated footballs knowing that the weather was going to be bad. And a couple weeks ago, lined up in what some believe to be an illegal formation and had an eligible Gronkowski go wide open. Yeah. Why is it he's the one that's continuing to push the envelope? Why is it that since Spygate, he has a better winning percentage than before he was caught because he's a Sith Lord and evil fuels him. <laughs> that's what I'm going for. That's the best one I've heard. A Sith Lord. There you go. Now this is not a uncommon thing in the NFL. Lots of quarterbacks like messing with the balls a little bit, if you will, including <laughs> one Aaron Rodgers, who said um, in a previous interview when he was talking to Phil Sims earlier this year, the opposite of what Tom Brady said. He, he said, quote, I like to push the limit to how much air we can put in the football, even go over what they allow you to do and see if the officials take air out of it. Um, he says that it allows him for easier grip. He likes the ball tight and, you know, no, no real huge surprise there because he's got pretty big hands for a quarterback and he's strong. So, so maybe Tom Brady isn't like that. Well, you know, something you bring up, that's one of my biggest problems with the spread offense. As a coach, I kind of like them balls to be a little bit deflated so the running backs can get a good grip on it. But the system I currently operate in with my high school team, we run spread. Quarterbacks love that tight ball. They, they love that feeling of an inflated ball. I, I think mentally they think, oh, it's really inflated. It's going to fly better. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it was traveling 200 miles an hour, the aerodynamics would yeah. you know, probably kick in if the ball is more rigid. It's all mental. It's all mental. Nobody has an arm like that. But we I, have not seen it yet. I'm telling you right <laughs> now, though, they could have taken that football, uh, filled a syringe up with ice water, <laughs> injected it into the football, put that football into a freezer for an hour, it's not going to affect the outcome of that game. No. It's, it's This is a non-issue. This is. Um, but interestingly enough, back in 2011, uh, Brady spoke to WEEI and said, quote, but when Gronk scores, it was like his eighth touchdown of the year. He spikes the ball and he deflates the ball. I love that because I like the deflated ball but I feel bad for that football because he puts everything he can into those spikes. <laughs> That's a powerful spike right there. You know, let's not get caught up on it, but no, in draft talk, if this holds up, this will be a factor because what have the Patriots been able to do, Sean? They draft well. They go and find those guys that nobody else is really thinking about in the third, fourth, fifth round. They bring them in and then they make everybody want them when they're getting rid of them for minimal money after – two AFC titles and a couple conference titles. This could prove to hurt the Patriots more than anything they've done in the past. Why? Just because of the draft picks. Draft picks is you, where you Belichick... Mean if, if the NFL does... Yeah, if the okay. NFL does do anything, this would hurt them more than money or anything else because, because they win in the draft. The Patriots always win in the draft. But, but you know, I'm saying as a player, hmm. you know, NFL players, they're not Boy Scouts, Okay. If I'm a player, I like that my team is is doing these sneaky little things to try to gain an advantage. Oh, yeah. You're trying to win the damn game. And if I'm a player on that current roster, I'm also like, great, take three draft picks away from them. Those are three more guys I don't have to worry about beating out next year. It's great for them. Works out. <laughs> oh, Bo, I wish I was a backup quarterback in the NFL so, so badly. Why is that? Well, the backup, the pine rider of the Kansas City Chiefs, Aaron Murray, Broke up with his uh, fiance earlier. Well, it got reported today. We Not don't know unusual. when it happened. Okay. Well, this girl, Casey McDonald, is 
a smoke show. Oh, good. She, she uh, started off doing uh, reporting and news anchoring in Philadelphia. And then once she uh, checked up with Aaron Murray, she moved out to Kansas City. And um, that's that's where she lives now. But he broke up with her, which is, I mean, golly. If, if you've seen pictures, I know a lot of sports fans out there know who this woman is and have followed her career. But... I just, I mean, where's Aaron Murray from? He's a Bama boy, right? Yeah. Well, he played at Bama, or not? Aaron Murray. Why am I having a hard time remembering? SEC for Aaron sure. Aaron Murray. Aaron Murray. Why you got to make me look dumb, Bo? Golly, why can't I remember Aaron Murray? That's not Georgia. 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 That's the court. Golly, that took forever. Georgia quarterback from the South. Probably had the type of mom that loved to whip up everything with way too much butter and gravy, which I'm not complaining about. He's with a career-minded smoke show. Like, she's just beautiful. She's the mm-hmm. one you're showing me the pictures of. Yes, I was. Yeah, my man's thinking about babies and child rearing. That's exactly what's going through Aaron Murray's head. Good for us because we don't have to worry about her being locked down, and maybe we'll get to see her being a Fox sideline reporter one day or something. I know that there are some guys from Barstool Sports that are conspiring right now on how they're they're going to make their move on this lady. Nice. Poor, poor girl. Well, you know, this is what I always tell guys, that you know, I, I have a wife and two kids at home, and this is no offense to any women out there, and this is an independent thought. Sean did not help me with See, this. See, I, I know Bo is about to say something really <laughs> offensive right now. Go on, Bo. Here we go. Men, I don't care how beautiful she is. If you do not give her children, guess what? Who's she going to talk to? Is she going to talk to the TV? She's going to talk to her mom and her sisters 24-7? No, she's going to talk to you. And she's going to want to watch romantic comedies during Monday night football games that she thinks are a blowout because the other team is up by 17 points. Prepare yourself. If you want to go with her, that's what you're going to get. Go get you a Midwestern lady that likes to change her own oil and have babies. Then you can watch all the Monday night football you want. This is one of the craziest stories <laughs> I've heard all year, Bo. I'm sure you heard all about this. Uh, this golfer, uh, Robert Allenby. Oh. Robert Allenby is like an episode of NCIS meets HBO, and it's real. It, it is real. Uh, well, yeah. maybe, maybe not. I, I kind of smell a rat in this whole story. But okay. if you missed the details, Allenby said Saturday, and this is from Mashable, uh, that he had been raw, beaten, and dumped in a park on Friday night when he visited a bar, a wine bar, after missing the cut in the Sony Open. Um, he says that he was like attacked, Robbed, thrown into the back of a car, driven across town, dumped off in a park. Okay. But these things do happen in major cities from time to time. Okay. Not totally unbelievable there. But he said, quote, you think that happens in the movies, not real life. I'm just happy to be alive. Well, his story is sounding a little bit less convincing after the homeless lady that found him in that park has contradicted his story. Uh, She says that it wasn't six miles away, but a couple of blocks away. And she also said that when she came across him, he was arguing with a couple of dudes about getting some of his possessions back in exchange for $500. Yes. Botched drug deal. Okay, so here's why I said this is HBO. Did he mess with the wrong pimp? Meets NCIS. You hit it right on the head. My man's an Aussie. He's Australian. The reporter that got the story from the homeless uh, individual was Australian. So it made me believe the American news outlets are not going to dig on the 78th golfer in the world. They're too busy trying to find out who knocked out Tiger Woods tooth in Italy right now, as we discovered earlier, but his local people are. And what you said about the homeless person, I'm just like, I read this and I say to myself, Oh my gosh, this dude got an escort. Something went South as far as the allegedly, allegedly, he got Don't get a suit, bro. Yeah, he allegedly, he got a woman of the night, an escort, whatever you want to call him. The deal went south. They took the money. And if you read into what the homeless woman says, Sean, he was escorted into a taxi cab. And my experience is not personally with escorts, but my experience is with people who run businesses that operate on the fringe of the law. You have to hire guys that are usually ex-police ex-military because they have the ability to conceal and carry and they can protect these women in a fashion that a guy like you and I can't because they know the law, well, right? Maybe not a guy like you and I, this, this, yeah, an average man. This is what I'm saying, though. 
if he was messing with some hoodlums, some drug dealers, he would have got beat up in that alley messing with those guys. But the fact that she says they escorted him to the taxi and asked him to kindly leave says to me he was dealing with an established business. Something was going down. It was an escort. Those are the only or, people that operate drugs, like that. Or drugs. I mean, yeah, just, well, maybe. Yeah, there was, are. He was done with the tournament. He yeah. might have been looking to, get, you know, kick off a little steam there. Who who knows what he's into? You know, you're you're uh, totally right about that. I remember a friend telling me he was working security for a movie. I'm not even going to name the celebrity because that's not cool. But um, he basically came up to him and was like, hey, brother, where, where's my drug guy? And he's along the lines of, uh, no, I don't know anything about that. But my friend, being who he was, he's like, what do you need? So he takes care of this very popular celebrity. If I told you guys who this was, people would trip out. But I'm not. I'm cool. Wait, wait and not it, be made me, it made me, at that moment, I was still in college. I was awakened to the fact, being from a small town in Indiana, there are people with enough power, influence, and money in this world. They don't have to go down to the guy behind the corner of the 7-Eleven like you and I. They have people come to them, and they usually operate like this. They have a couple security guys, maybe a woman as a front. Whatever happened, like you said, Sean, and like I was saying, something went south, and he was escorted into that taxi cab. You can put the story together there. We've seen enough TV, read enough stories. You draw your own conclusion, people. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope you got your seatbelt on, because coming up, we're talking Pro Bowl football. Plus, we might finally get the Pacquiao-Mayweather fight. And then later in the show, Greg Anthony rested on a prostitution sting. It's all coming up on the Sean and Bo Show. Hey, everybody. I know one thing. If you're listening to a sports podcast right now, you can't get enough sports. And as we know, the football season's coming to a close, but there's lots of other sports to follow. And I found a great place for you to get connected with more sports podcasts. Go to reddit.com slash r slash reddit sports radio. That's reddit sports radio. Whatever you're into, whether it be hockey, the English Premier League, or clowns like us, you can find lots of great podcasts. Expand your horizons. Reddit.com slash r slash reddit sports radio. Welcome back, Sean and Bo Nation. It is a time of year where we as Americans sit back and observe a tradition so steeped in Americana, it makes apple pie seem communist. That's right, Bo. We're, of course, talking about the patriotic, time-worn tradition of pretending to care about the Pro Bowl. A game of biblical proportions. (laughs) So gather round, fellow patriots, as we look at the majesty and wonder that is the National Football League All-Star Game where somehow Andy Dalton is the starting quarterback. Yeah, Bo, wow. This thing's going to be more of a stinker than it usually is. Uh, As you noted, uh, Rodgers is not playing. Andy Dalton is in. And if you look at the roster, 27 of the 86 players aren't even going to show up to play. It it is so laughable. It it is comical that this is an all-star game. And An interesting thing that I read, I don't know how true this is, but I guess the NFL All-Star Game, which we call the Pro Bowl, is the lowest rated of all the All-Star Games of the Major League Sports, actually receives a lower rating than the lowest rated regular season games. Only professional sport where that happens. Oh, so you're talking, you know, the big time rivalry games, the Ravens, Steelers, you know, uh, maybe the Broncos are, are playing somebody good, Seahawks, Niners. That, that's what you mean, right? No, no. I'm sitting here, I'm talking about Tampa Bay, Carolina, Minnesota against the Texans on a Thursday night game. Ew. Gets a higher rating than the Pro Bowl. Sad. Yeah, well, Bo, it's okay. I know what you're saying to yourself. And I know how the NFL is going to spice up the Pro Bowl this year. That's right, Bo. More timeouts. There we go. That's it, exactly oh, what it needed. Oh, but, but that's not all. They're also going to make the uh, goalposts a little narrower for, for extra points. Oh, that ought to be fun. That is sizzling excitement, folks. Oh, goodness. So now we're going to have to listen to the big, you know, Mike and Mike's of the world, the, the guys who have the national shows. They're going to actually talk for a week while they're waiting on that Super Bowl story to kind of develop about how the league is using the Pro Bowl game to decide whether they're going to go to a shorter goalposts well, or something. It'll be crazy. Yeah, yeah, they always do this where yeah. they kind of tinker around with rules in the Pro Bowl. And that's all fine and good, but 
What I would like to see them tinker with is like, you know, slight rule changes like, I don't know, allowing the free safeties to carry crowbars. There you go. That's, you know, that's something we could play around with. I'd watch that. I always thought it would be cool if there was like a zone on the field where, I don't know, maybe it's on the opposite 40 or 35, where if you throw a touchdown pass from this point, it's worth 12 instead of six. I just thought that would be awesome. Like you would see teams that would be down by three scores and they would literally be trying to lateral the ball back to the 35 so they can launch a Hail Mary and score 12. I was watching <laughs> uh, um, uh, Adam Carolla on Rich Eisen's show a while ago, like last week, two weeks ago, something like that. Yeah. I liked his idea the best. Of, What's that? And, and by the way, apparently Adam Carolla came up with the idea of making the uprights taller before anybody else, and they actually implemented that. So, so he's got nice. some, he's got some pedigree when it comes to you know making these these innovative rule changes. Um, he thinks that once per game, um, a single column would rise from the center of the uprights, mm -hmm. and if you can if you can kick it directly into that column, the game's instantly tied. Yes. How about that? I mean, that, that that'd be a great awesome. Pro Bowl rule, right? That is awesome. Yeah, test something out like that. That would be cool. I still like my crowbar idea better, though. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe you get like a, a spotlight and you do like one, <laughs> a shadow in the end zone. And if or you spotlight the end zone, and if you can catch the football inside the spotlight, you get like 25 points. <laughs> uh, do what they do, like uh, that celebrity beach ball stuff. Yeah. Just make it half all stars and half sports. You know, swimsuit models. You that, know what? I would make it better also. You just said something that would... There are so many people in America that talk about football, criticize football players. It would be so neat to oh, we see... Get to, we get to play? An invitation go oh. out to guys like us. Just like, yeah. you know, some guy in Philly that's been talking about the safety. Yeah, just a lottery. Like, hey, guess what? Bill from K99, you know, whatever, in Philadelphia is coming down to play in the Pro Bowl. Oh, man. <laughs> J.J. Watt broke my collarbone, but it was awesome. He's got a thumbs up on the stretcher. He's all wrapped in bandages. This is the greatest experience of my life. He autographed the gurney. <laughs> I mean, just right Right here, the excitement we have, the pure joy on our faces of a, an, Ameri an American lottery system where you can go to the Pro Bowl as a fan or even a media member. There yeah, we go. Uh, that's, that's a great <laughs> idea there. Um, you know, some people that aren't as thrilled about our terrific ideas like the crowbar thing, um, I've, I've been saying that they need to bring back the skills competition. Okay, I could see that, but I think in the end it would get played out just like the dunk competition is now in the NBA. So maybe, yeah, maybe they do do some sort of skills competition, but every player's mic'd up the entire time. <laughs> yeah, so, so that you, would be So fun. you get to hear Odell Beckham and Larry Fitzgerald jarring. Yeah. Maybe Richard Sherman gets a little too close to Crabtree. You, you know, the possibilities are endless. You know, it's amazing you brought up the uh, NFL skills competition because there was a generation and I was included in that generation. You were in that generation where we were giving, given this access to our stars, Michael Jordan still participated in things like this. Larry bird in the NFL, I could see guys like Troy Eggman, Emmett Smith doing these things. And what was neat about it was when you would see them run a four, four forty in the skills competition, or they'd bench press two seventy five how many other times, whatever they do. They would often comment on their workout regimens. They would tell you, oh, yeah, I, in the offseason, this is what I do. That's why this is so easy. As a youth, that was just free information. And I, I say now, like, things are so closed up and the, they don't have the access. Like the, the whole idea of the Pro Bowl week was we got access to these players. And now they don't do it. I understand there's big money, there's contracts, there's injury, but we do have to give some sort of alternative to get a new generation interested in the NFL because I don't care what business it is. There isn't a business that's been on this planet or in this country that hasn't went through a period where they just lose revenue. They lose new viewers. The NFL... You have it great right now because you have a generation of people that are my dad, my grandfather, and me who watch it. You got to do something to draw these young kids in, create new stars. new Because really, my son's in second grade, and you've heard me say this on the show, Sean. He, he, he watches football with me, but he knows names like Adrian Peterson and Ray Rice, and we know why that is. He doesn't know their names because of what they've done on the field. 
And that's what we need to change. You got to get something going. And I don't know if it's a skills competition or what, but do something. Yeah. I, you know, I, I make fun of the pro bowl every single year and I, I still punish myself by watching it. <laughs> I never know why I do, but I, you know, it's, it's football, it's on TV. You got a week to burn before the super bowl. It's an yep. excuse to eat some wings and down a couple of beers. So yeah, it is. Ah, it's one a, more game. It's a tradition. Unlike any other, <laughs> It's me hating myself for watching the Pro Bowl sitting on my couch half buzzed. It's true. Well, Bo, I don't know if you caught the uh, UFC events on Fox Sports 1 after the Patriots beat down. You no, know, I was going to turn in to, tune into it, but I didn't make it that far. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> the alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it was, it was great. It was one of the best free UFC events I've seen. Nice. Um, you had our, our boy from uh, here in Albuquerque, the Cowboy Cerrone. He was fighting uh, Benson Henderson. That was a good fight that went to a decision. Um, then you had McGregor. Okay. Who I think I heard, it might have been Joe Buck or Aikman call the Irish Muhammad Ali. And I was like, <laughs> dude, when slow your roll, man. Somebody, I, I do remember that. That's when I was turning off Fox and they were saying, this guy predicts when he's going to knock him out. He's a Mo Irish Muhammad or whatever, you know, Scottish Muhammad. Say, Get out of here. These but, people are crazy. No, but speaking of crowbars, <laughs> If his opponent, Seaver, had a crowbar, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. I mean, it was a dominant, dominant performance. And now um, he's slated to fight uh, Josie Aldo sometime, probably in the summer. Um, but it was great because that, that Patriots game was so much of a blowout that it was good to have a little something to watch at night because we all know the stupid way that they schedule these games. They're all over by the time the, you know, the sun's going down yeah. here on the, uh, on, on towards the West coast. So yeah, on the West coast, it's like you get your party started and everybody's over the house for watching the games. And then right when it's about six forty five, it's like, okay, what are we going to do now? <laughs> It's the weirdest thing. But, and then on the East Coast with the timing schedule, if you're my brother, you're trying to watch the end of a football game and you're like, I needed to be in bed an hour ago. Yeah. They need to work on that. Yeah. Stupid time zones. We need a time machine or something. Well, <laughs> I bring up the UFC because never go out drinking with BJ Penn. I'm going to give you that word of advice right okay. now, Bo. He is not a good friend. Um, he was arrested for assault. Because he beat up one of his very good friends. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Classy guy. Uh, he was out drinking in Hawaii with a buddy. Uh, apparently his buddy shoved him away because he was like trying to pick a fight with some bar patrons. And, you, and by the way, you got to think if you're that established of a UFC phenomenon, I mean, he had a long career that you would have gotten that kind of machismo crap out of your system and wouldn't be picking fights at a sports bar, but... That apparently wasn't the case. So then BJ Penn got mad at his friend, challenged him to a fight. They went out into the parking lot, and I guess there was kind of a cheap shot involved. And all of a sudden, the friend has like a fractured eye socket or something oh, terrible yeah. like that. So like I said, don't don't go drinking with that man. Professional punch is what he experienced. But I just remember all those fights in the videos where Dana White's trying to make contact with BJ Penn. It's three weeks before a fight in Vegas, and he's not answering his cell phone for two days. The guy has obviously had issues with Dana White and the different leagues that he's tried to fight in, contractual issues, problems with uh, weight. This doesn't surprise me. You know, we talked about uh, changes to the rules. I would have loved to have seen like some sort of agreed upon fight where like Tank Abbott fought somebody and they both agreed to down like half of a fifth. There you before, go. You know, because I have a feeling somebody like Tank Abbott, that would have fueled him even more. Yeah. You know, he would have been absorbing punches in that big fat gut and slowly throwing those haymakers. It would have been awesome. You might be onto something. Maybe that's I mean, our maybe, calling. What am I talking about? He, he probably was drunk when he was the, fighting. <laughs> the drunk league. Yeah. That's what we'll be. We'll just be a league where you tune in. We're not going to charge you 50 bucks like UFC and you know Oscar De La Hoya. It's just 10 bucks. The price of an eight pack of Bud Light ten, ten at your bucks, local corner ten store. 10 bucks or a 12 pack. We don't care. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> and, like, it's like canned goods. <laughs> There's not going to be any uh, you know, undercard fights because if we did that, nobody would be buzzed enough. You're just going to have to watch tape delay reruns of some Something crappy before our drunks show up and start pounding on each other. Cartoons, probably. <laughs> yeah, we'll just show cartoons. There you go. Well, Man, we're on to something. I hate this so much, Bo, because once again, I am goaded into caring about something that I've long since stopped caring about, and that is the Pacquiao Mayweather oh, fight. Oh, gosh. Here we go. You know, you know the old saying, better late than never? 
Mm. That's not true when it comes to fighters and them being in the prime of their careers. I mean, we all know that this fight should have happened a decade ago plus. No. Yeah. But now it looks like it's finally starting to congeal. The details are getting finalized. And Manny Pacquiao is taking to Twitter to talk all kinds of junk to Floyd Mayweather. He tweeted out earlier, if you really care about the fans, you'll fight. If you care about yourself, you won't fight. Hashtag Manny Smile. Wow. He also went on to say, I can easily beat at Floyd Mayweather. I believe that. Um, he said that everyone had me as a big underdog to Oscar De La Hoya too. If Floyd Mayweather fights me, boxing will get an even bigger upset victory. Does that picture that you're looking at of, is that Manny Pacquiao? Mm -hmm. Does he have gray hair? <laughs> Look like he had gray hair from uh, across the it's, table. It's the sheen. Okay. Uh, that's it's from his Pantene man, Pro V. This fight is really way past its prime if his hair is turning gray. They're, they're <laughs> swinging walkers at each other. <laughs> You know, there are people that are in prison that were going to gamble on this fight or go to this fight that are serving like seven year sentences that won't be able to observe it or order it or experience it because this fight is so far past no, its there's, prime. There's probably people that have gotten out of prison on like, <laughs> you know, on, on they, they probably went man, in manslaughter and they're, they get out and they're like, oh man, I. I made it. Who, who won that fight anyway? <laughs> They're like, buddy, what are you talking about? The Manny Pacquiao Mayweather fight. It hasn't happened yet. You're kidding me. It's going to happen this year. You made it. <laughs> I just hate this though, because it's like, it's not the fight that we should have gotten. And you know that they're going to, it's, it doesn't matter. They're going to make money hand over fist yeah. if this fight does go down. So they don't learn a lesson, you know, it, it just sucks. And it's almost to a point to where if Floyd Mayweather, even if he slips up at this stage in his career, what does that mean? At this time in his career, you beat an aging Floyd Mayweather with an aging Pacquiao. There's still some young bucks out there that are just waiting for him to retire and disappear so they can be champs in four years. They're not going to be around forever, people. I mean, I would certainly be rooting for Pacquiao, but if I was going to bet on that fight... I don't know, man. I think it's going to be the same old boring defensive Mayweather fight. And Pacquiao now in his older age doesn't have the same speed he did. So mm -hmm. he doesn't maybe even necessarily have the tools to overcome Mayweather's great defense. So it's uh, going to be sad. I mean, it really will because you will see glimpses of the Manny Pacquiao. We wanted to see fight that fight, but he's just not there. It's I'm, age. I'm going to be screaming at my computer screen, demanding a refund from the free live stream exactly. that I watch this fight on. It'll either be on a computer like you're going to watch across the street at the neighbors for free or at a Buffalo Wild Wings or something. I'm no. not paying for that. Just, just don't go with BJ Penn. No, don't no. do that. Coming up, Greg Anthony, the NBA analyst, got pot for soliciting a hooker. We're going to be talking about that. Plus, we're going to take a look back at the conference championship games and look forward to some of the things surrounding the big game in Arizona. No, not the Pro Bowl, the real one. It's all coming up on the Sean and Bo Show. Hey, it's Bo from the Sean and Bo Show. Just reminding you loyal listeners out there, don't forget about us on Twitter. We are out there at Sean and Bo Show on Twitter. Do not forget to go check us out. We have tons of followers and new people posting stuff every day. It's very entertaining. Don't miss it. And remember, we are out there on iTunes. We need people to go download the show on iTunes because we know you want more sports and we want to keep bringing more sports to you. Paying the twin shirt. <laughs> Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Sean and Bo Show. Wow, this is an embarrassing one, Bo. CBS basketball analyst, former NBA great Greg Anthony was arrested Friday, charged with soliciting a hooker. Mm, mm, mm. In our nation's capital. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that stuff never happens in D.C. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's a sad thing to happen especially I, I have to bring it up this is an african-american that is on tv mlk weekend kind of a you know not a good time to be getting in trouble uh, he's just trying to support the local economy yeah, that's, that's what doing. it was he's trying to drop some money into dc it all benefits the same country you but, know but uh sean you just would hope when you watch guys that are associated with the ncaa tournament or things that are supposed to be pure amateur athletic competitions, 
that they wouldn't be doing these things at night. But we know that that's not true. It's always the guys with the money, the power, and the ability. It's not going to be the guys that are working, you know, as a custodian down at the local Walmart or whatever retail shop you have in your neighborhood because they can't afford it. It's just the Allen B story. Go back to that story a couple segments ago. Who can be standing in an alley talking about $500, $1,000, $1,500 besides these people. To you and I, everyday people that hopefully listen to our show, we go and drop $500. It better be for something we're going to use for a long time because we're going to need that money back. Yeah, and it better have some resale value on it too. (laughs) Go on Craigslist or eBay real quick. Now, the funniest part about this whole thing to me well, two things. One, he was busted inside of a double tree. Oh, hey, wow. nice hotel, Greg. Uh, and also, this was before 6 p.m. Oh, my God. It's like, dude, I know you're getting old, but are you really going to bed that early? <laughs> hey, baby, we need to hurry this up. I need to get this done before Matlock comes on. <laughs> I got some milk on the stove getting warm. I have my Muta- Metamucil already poured out. Let's get this thing done. Oh, my goodness. And, and you know... He's been suspended indefinitely. He's not going to do the tournament this year, obviously, unless his lawyer, he goes and resurrects Johnny Cochran from the dead, and he just figures out a way to get this guy back on the air. I don't see him in a booth wearing a headset or doing anything for really? CBS. Really? I don't. I don't think he escapes this one. Well, why don't you ask Marv Levy? Well, I know about Marv Levy, but Marv is a guy with – you can't do without Marv. Marv's a little different. Greg Anthony, is this the guy that's sitting well, on he, the chair? he stepped back from broadcasting for, I think it was at least a couple of years, didn't he? Yeah, he, he did. He did. He so, did step back. It's, you know, look, the reality is embarrassing for him, embarrassing for his family, but he didn't hurt anybody. This is a victimless crime. I, you know, I don't know how you feel about it, but I think personally prostitution should probably be legal anyway. Oh, you know, that, that's, that's a whole nother tangent, but uh, I, I have a big problem in our society when people are in a certain position and they have certain power and they're just being stupid. Like you said, my man's in a double tree. I'm pretty sure there are some hotels. You think he tried to, you think he tried to pair with those free cookies they give out? <laughs> oh God. Come on, baby. They're still warm. <laughs> oh man. I'm sorry. Uh, he issued, this has got real ghetto. Right he, he issued a statement. Uh, I made a mistake with this lapse of judgment. I embarrassed many, including myself. I will work to regain the trust that I have lost. And the first step is saying that I am sorry. No, man. One of my biggest friends playing college football, that's what he would do in the offseason and stuff. He was a security guard at the double tree, and he was a lineman. So you got me cracking up because now I remember when Dustin used to get all those cookies off the double tree for us. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's right. You can pay people in cookies at the double tree. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's good. Oh, uh, well, the conference championship games are, of course, a uh, few days back. Um, I got to say, you know, I, I picked both of these games right, but good God. I don't know. I bet a coworker on the, uh, on the Seahawks game. I, I took the Seahawks. They didn't even ask for any points. I, I don't even know if I can collect the money. Well, yeah, I'm going to collect the money, but I, I'm going to feel real bad about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't get off this. This same guy that was giving out the cookies from the Double Tree called me a few years ago because he was looking for a home for one of his vending machines. He has, he has graduated to offensive line in heaven. He owns snack machines. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Dustin, you are the regulator of snacks now. It, it is the perfect position for him, but let's move on. I'm sitting here thinking about cookies and vending machines. I think I'm going to hit up a 7-Eleven on the way home. I so, need to get some good stuff. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm not surprised the Seahawks won. I'm obviously very surprised about how that game went down. Yeah, I mean, if I'm looking at the two games, the one that I expected to be a blowout was that Seahawks Colts or uh, Packers. Seahawks Packers game rather, and I thought that the the other game eh, could go either way. But as we know, that that's not how it went down. What's a pro- You know, what did you take out of those games and those performances? You know, I had this long, elaborate story about how my grandma has a great recipe for meatloaf, and it hasn't changed in a million years. And oh, we don't want to be bored by that. And we're already hungry enough. But Pete Carroll. 
and the Seattle Seahawks and Russell Wilson and that defense have shown us something. Consistency in the NFL still goes a long way. For the GMs and the owners and the coaches out there that are going back to that drawing board and getting out the yarn so they can get their string theories going, it, it, just calm down. These guys run the read option. They throw tons of picks. They make mistakes. I think they were one in three, right? Mm-hmm. They started the season one in three, but they didn't panic. And I like when Russell Wilson in the post game interview was talking about that. After he was done crying. After he finished crying. He finally started crying. I say consistency. I coach football. I'm telling myself, Bo, stop getting caught up in all these gimmicks. Oregon made it to that national championship game. You wouldn't believe how many high school coaches and college coaches you've seen already, oh, we got to get faster. We're not fast enough. We got to run a play every 16 seconds. But everybody forgets that the other guys on the other side of the field just mauled them and overpowered them. That's what Seattle does. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I wanted Dallas in that game so bad. But now I look at it and I'm like, we weren't ready. We're not ready for that game. We're getting there, but we can't rely on one aspect of our team to win football games. And that's what championship teams do. I don't care who they are, what point of history they were in. It was the 85 Bears. If it was the Seahawks team from last year, they did one thing really well and everything else was mediocre and just good enough to stay in the ball game. And if they continue to do this and make Russell Wilson one of the highest paid quarterbacks moving forward, lock down these defensive players, this could be our new dynasty. The Seattle Seahawks could be our new dynasty. Is that crazy? Yeah, and you think about it. I mean, who is who is the oldest person in that Legion of Boom? Like Cam <laughs> Chancellor? I mean, yeah. they, they, they're all pretty young guys. And athletic. They eat right. They take care of themselves. Campbell's, Campbell's chunky. Yeah, they're, they're not the guys – that won Super Bowls a decade ago. They have changed. They have broken the mold. I'm waiting to see what they look like after HGH testing comes around, but we'll talk about that when we get there. It's just a new breed. Get ready for it. We're going to save like a lot of our Super Bowl analysis as as you know the actual game gets a little closer. We'll talk about it next week. But I just want to bring this one thing up. The one thing I worry about with that uh, Seahawks defense Who's going to stop Gronk? Mm. What's the strategy for Gronk? Gronk and Edelman pose a problem. Those are two big problems because we remember that game, uh, San Diego Char- San Diego Chargers, earlier in the year, ate them up with a ton of short passes. They had little – I even believe they took um, – did they put him on offense that game? Because remember the whole Twitter war broke up between Sherman and Rivers and a few other guys – on that charge, because after that game, people felt like the Chargers were had arrived. They were going to be the new team on the block. But that Same thing they say every damn it, year. About I the said Chargers. It. I, I was believing it this year. But if you can manage to run those routes and have a guy like a Edelman that can get in there and just stop on a dime because he's built like Mighty Mouse, and then you can also take Gronk and run at them. At the safeties, it, that is going to be something difficult to see. But I believe last year, if we had this show, we would have been caught up in the Manning hype. And I'm not buying that. I'm not losing money again. I am going Seattle all the way. You'll hear me come back next week and tell you why Seattle's going to win this game. And, and by the way, I got our our celebrity friend on Twitter, uh, Melissa Joan Hart. I, I got her Super Bowl pick out of her last night. Seahawks by seven. Yeah. So the, you agree with the Oracle. There we go. That's nice. Me and a witch. That's awesome. Well, after the game, Vince Wilfork had a very eventful night, Bo. You saw this. You had a quite, quite an interesting ride home. Yeah. There's not a lot out about this story right now other than the fact that Vince Wilfork, Wilfork a big, giant, massive man that anchors down the middle for the New England Patriots defensive lineman, was driving home after winning the AFC title, knowing he's going to the Super Bowl, sees an overturned vehicle and pulls a lady out to safety. Yeah. It was just an amazing story. Um, you always like to see stories like that because I believe it humanizes people that sometimes we tend to believe have superhuman qualities on TV. He's just like the rest of us. He has feelings, emotions. He's seen a car turned over. And I'm like this. My wife, she – I seen an overturned car. It was on a highway. I imagine because it was in such a rom- remote location, Sean, that the um, wrecker service 
was not able to get out there. Is this an old farm road up near the ranch up north? They weren't out able to get out there and sure. turn over the vehicle and take it. But me being who I am, I'm country. I know this happens all the time. I have to get out and look. I need to make sure there's not a person inside there. It's the human thing to do. It's what human beings do. Everybody does that kind of stuff. And it's just glad to see a good story coming out. Yeah, it'd be a really good, you know, uh, feel good story if, if it weren't for one fact, Bo. What's up? Uh, the lady was drunk. She was arrested for DUI. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. But, but I mean, you, you know, Vince Wilfork doesn't know that. Yeah. He's just looking out for somebody. So that was very cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, the fan that caught the winning touchdown in overtime of that Seattle Seahawks game um, got quite the offer the, the day afterwards. A collector offered him $20,000, sports memorabilia collector, wow. and the jobless 32-year-old turned it down? What? Why? So $20,000, okay, maybe he thinks it's going to you know, appreciate in value, but he also turned down the offer of the man that caught the reception, Curse, um, who offered him a team-signed helmet and his game jersey in oh exchange for the football. So so what does this guy try to do? He says, nah, but eh, if you throw in a Super Bowl package, maybe we can work something out. <laughs> He's to work at an air fair. He's going to get some frequent flyer miles out of this deal. One problem for this gentleman, though, if he does get those Super Bowl ticks, which, by the way, this year they're only like $3,000. It's mm-hmm. gone down this year. Uh, but if he does get those ticks... He can't get too drunk that day because otherwise he's going to be very hungover when the day after the Super Bowl, he has to report to jail. <laughs> oh, so I wish, I wish I knew what his offense was because just his pattern of behavior, just from what we know about this guy, he's got to yeah. be some, some huckster, some con man, stuff like that. Well, you know, originally when I seen the headline, that story, I didn't have time to read it going to work. Um, my wife and I, we just assumed it was some Microsoft person or it's some computer programmer for Samsung, you know, whatever. But now that I know this, it is so comical because it's what you hear people say, what a fan is, it's a fanatic. Yep. And the way he's acting, you know, we were just off the air, I think a week ago, we were talking about, man, if I could get 30 grand... And you can do some smart stuff with thirty grand and have your nice little nest egg in thirty years, you know. Yeah, no doubt. Come on, guy, wake up! And now that I know that you're going to jail, you need to take that money. He's going to jail. He's got two <laughs> kids, and he doesn't have a job. Oh my goodness! Well, you could get a pretty damn good lawyer for for that much money, could you not? Uh, man, the uh, something there's something going on up there in Washington we don't know about. Are they giving out free money? Like, what's up in Washington? Certain things are legal up there. <laughs> oh, man, smoking too much. It's exactly what it is. Well, Bo, it's time for the segment of the show where we get to uh, pat ourselves on the back a little bit because you called it Kubiak, new head coach of the Broncos. Saw that coming all the way. Also, John Fox to the Bears. Yeah, you're not surprised by either one of those. Um, I think the biggest move, the one that might work out the best, though is uh, Tressman, the old coach of the Bears, is going to be the OC for the Ravens. Yeah, you had mentioned that. And when we were talking, I, the personalities of Tressman and Flacco, I just think half the mesh. Seems like two guys that could trade stories about where they shop for Dockers and uh, a good way to perform a or execute the perfect comb over. You know, that's mm. the kind of stuff they were talking about. Swap, it's perfect. swap some cream of wheat recipes. <laughs> there you go. Don't put too much cinnamon in that now. It gets too tangy. <laughs> you know, and then here's the other thing. I, I, I didn't plan on this story, but I had seen where um, Jim Harbaugh's son is the tight ends coach for Michigan. Yeah. And I just have to say something. It, it, it must be nice to just wake up and be able to just get a great job that most people would hang their hat on. A guy like myself or many f- people who call themselves coaches that played Division One sports or maybe played in the NFL, you would be able to put on your grave that Michigan logo and say tight ends coach 2015 to 2022, and that's a great life. This kid's going to lock that job down. And he's never done anything except work for his uncle. He was head of offensive quality control for the Ravens for three years, and now he's going to go work for his pop. Well, I think (laughs) that the craziest thing about that is that Harbaugh has that university drinking the Kool-Aid so much 
They don't even care. They don't care. We got Harbaugh. We got Nepotism. two Harbaugh's. Bring another one. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you got like a, a nephew or something? <laughs> you know what happens when you put one Harbaugh against one Harbaugh? You get two Harbaugh's, and that's better than no Harbaugh's. Like, oh, my gosh. The T-shirts are just rolling off my tongue right now. I can see it. The whole student body section wearing them next year. Was it Jay Harbaugh, I believe, is the name? Mm-hmm. Hey, it, it, it's great for him. I wish it was me. But – to the fans out there that care about their programs or their NFL franchises, be glad when you get a John Fox thrown in your lap, as Earl Lacker was saying on Twitter. He's the kind of guy that players are excited to play for, and he wins championships, and the Broncos just let him go. Watch out for the Bears, NFC. Oh, it was announced earlier today that NBC is going to offer free streaming of the Super Bowl. It's going to be like the entire event, halftime show, pregame. They're even like throwing in an episode of some stupid show afterwards that you won't watch. And that, you know, a lot of these so called cord cutters are excited about that. But one, who the hell doesn't own an antenna? I know. This isn't cable we're talking about. This is NBC. What, you don't get NBC with your rabbit ears? You'd be surprised get how many people. paper clips, some tinfoil. You're in business. They don't. I feel like we should do a whole segment that just describes to people what broadcast networks are. And they have a true purpose. It's not the purpose of NBC to give us more Saturday Night Live. It's in case of an emergency or we're ever under attack. They can communicate. It is a good communication line for our government and local law enforcement, whatever. But there are people out there, Sean, that I hear them, like, I think Fox may be getting cut from Dish Network. And they're like, how am I going to watch the Dallas Cowboys games? I'm like, go get some metal, some tinfoil, plug it into the back of your LCD HDTV, and guess what? Channels 2 through 50 are free. It's amazing. People don't know. Yeah. They have no idea. Yeah. And, and you know, back in the day when you had to deal with that static, that was annoying. But these days, that, that over-the-air... Uh, TV is, is HD anyway. It looks yeah. pretty good. So, and point two, I was initially excited about this because I don't know if these guys are going to make me come into work or not on, on Super Bowl Sunday. I'd like to think they know better, but I was like, oh, well, at the very least, I'll be able to pull up my phone yeah. and watch the Super Bowl, right? Watch the app. Yeah. No. <laughs> Verizon has the rights. To, to streaming on mobile devices. Yeah. So the only way, and I don't even know if Verizon's offering the Super Bowl. I would think that they will as yeah. part of like the NFL app. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, you, you're SOL if you have the wrong carrier. Yeah, that is one of those so, unfortunate things. So and... the only people this is good for, Bo, are people that have computers, mm-hmm. internet, and no rabbit ears. Yeah. It's such a small segment of people. They're just trying to steal some of the news from ESPN was it two weeks ago, announced in the Washington Post that they're going to allow people to buy a $20 Netflix-type subscription. But when you read into that, you find out that it's just going to be centered around the NBA. So I'm a cord cutter myself. I got real excited, but when I started doing some investigating, I find out I'm not going to be watching Ohio State Big Ten SEC with that subscription. I'm just going to get a few NBA games, and I'll probably be able to watch my Lobos because they'll give out Mountain West and Conference USA type games all day, you know. But who cares about that, right? I don't know <laughs> if we've ever gotten into this, but are you, you know, every everybody has a side when you ask them this question. Are, are you a, a Tupac guy or a Biggie guy? Oh, man, and that's funny because we had a nice conversation about this not too long ago. And this is the way it was for me. As a kid, I was all caught up in Tupac. Because Tupac was flashing guns, and he was West Coast, and he rolled around in Rolls Royces. But as I became an adult, and my ears opened, and I closed my eyes, I had more respect for Biggie. Because Biggie, his lyrics, he crushed Tupac. I agree. However, now I'm a Biggie guy. This guy's an adult. He disagrees with both of us. Who would have thought? Julian Edelman, big (laughs) Tupac fan. Wow. He appeared on uh, NBC Nightly News wearing a Tupac t-shirt uh, featuring Tupac uh, flipping the birds. Yeah, there so you go. NBC had to apologize for that. <laughs> That's nice to see that Edelman's doing that. Um, you know, Big Ear Tupac will be a debate that will, I believe, die with our generation, obviously, because we're the ones who experience. Yeah, because it. the answer is Biggie or you're wrong. <laughs> but that, you know what I think Tupac benefits from? He just had way more songs and more exposure, longer time. That's true. If Biggie had more albums, the guy was just off the dome. Biggie 
could still be out there today, number one hits. He, the rap game would not be what it was if Biggie was alive. Totally agree. Well, luckily for Edelman, he's going to have some extra change laying around to grab himself some new Tupac t-shirts because he has made it clear that if you're a friend or even family of Edelman, do not call him asking for Super Bowl tickets. He is, he is refusing to buy anybody Super Bowl tickets. Wow. Like, what kind of guy is this? Tupac t-shirt after the game. Well, he'll tell you. <laughs> Quote, I'm a pretty big a-hole to all my friends and family. They know that. When it's football time, it's football time. And he basically said that it has less to do with money and more to do with staying in his routine. You know, the same routine, his treatments, his you know, hot soaks, his ice baths, all that stuff um, leading up to the big game. Because he thinks you know, the team that keeps it the most normal routine-wise is going to have the advantage. Mm. So it makes sense, I guess. But, man, how, how bad would it suck to be one of Edelman's boys? And you're, you're watching the, the conference game. You're like, yeah, we're going to the Super no, Bowl. I always believe guys like that just admit that they're average talent. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't think Megatron has to worry about who's talking to him tonight before the game to go out and leap over everybody and make amazing catches. <laughs> Imagine Megatron has been daydreaming before. I wonder if like Megatron and Des Bryant have ever been in a daydream. They're like thinking about, did I feed the dogs? Oh, football. <laughs> it's catch it. Oh, I scored a touchdown. Man, this is easy. <laughs> well, be sure to come back next week. We're going to be talking a lot of Super Bowl, um, the interesting bets you can make, the prop bets. I think maybe we should even do a power ranking of Super Bowl food next week, Bo. So so think about that a little bit. It was it uh, Katy Perry, Lenny Kravitz. Oh, yeah. So we have to do something along the lines of what classic rock songs will they just destroy? <laughs> is it, and I think this is the first time they've had like a, a somewhat contemporary female act on the Super Bowl since the whole Janet Jackson fiasco. Oh yeah, when half of her lady parts fell out, I didn't yeah. even get a good look at it. It wasn't worth it. So come back next week. Until then, I'm Sean O'Donnell along with Bo Greer reminding you, tip your pizza man. See you next week. Hey Bo, you want a cookie? <laughs>